Hello guys, good morning. Well, for me, it's good morning. It could be good afternoon for you or good evening. But today I'm going to be making a different type of video. I'm going to be playing the Kleber. And how this is going to work is I'm going to be playing it live. So I'm recording this not really live on Twitch. I'm recording this in the morning whilst I'm not streaming, but I'm recording it live. So as you can see, I am literally moving everything. Here's the build we're going to be running today in randoms. And basically, this is the build for now. Um, I'm not going to really read throughout, read all of it. You can pause the video and just look at the build. It's not really hard to see. But um, apart from that, I'm going to just go into a randoms game and see how it goes. Maybe play two, two games and we'll see how it goes. So let's just queue up with Kleber. Um, quite a different type of video. I don't normally make a video like this. But let's see how this goes, I guess. So Kleber. Very interesting, very interesting. How long will we, will our queue time actually be, right? Who knows? Who knows? But we're here. Um, I hope you don't get um, annoyed by the construction site in the background. Um, if you if you hear it, well, let me know. If you don't hear it, maybe if it's not that annoying, just tell me as well. I, I just you know want to see see if I can actually record videos during the day if you know they're working in full blast like they are currently. So. Um, but anyway, we got a game. <clears throat> we got a game. 40 seconds or so. <laughs> but uh, let's go. Let's see what we get. So one of the most important things to look at when you get a game like this is matchmaking straight away. And what ships did we get? First, I always look at really and truly the battleships, which we have to farm. We have four. Matchmaking is I and even. This is NA, well, NA morning. Well, it's actually NA late night. And for me, it's uh, EU morning, obviously. But um this is NA late night uh, matchmaking. Here we have three battleships on our side, four on the enemy team. And we'll see what we're going to do here. First thing I look at is always battleships and carrier. Um, battleships are the ones which are you're going to actually be farming in Kleber. Carrier is going to be the biggest annoyance for you in Kleber. So you have to make sure to know what you're fighting against, which is a Nakimov. I think our Nakimov player should be better. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyway... So another big thing is, of course, looking at the destroyer lineups and the cruiser lineups, because those things are also going to be going to be annoying you in the long run, right? Destroyers are going to be outspotting you because Kleber has really horrible detection, especially with this build, um, even without this build, let alone with this build. But then you have um, the four cruisers as well. So for destroyers, we have gearing we have to deal with, Shima and Vampire. Remember, in Kleber, you're not going to have to, like, run at them and like try to torture them that's not your goal in clip here your goal is just support your team and just farm damage in the meantime and try cap wherever you can and do whatever you can really truly I'll, I'll just walk through this match and try to explain what i'm doing but um shima gearing vampire 2 um really truly not crazy destroyers vampire 2 might be a bit annoying for us and shima because of the detection but for cruisers, we have Condi, Goliath, Petro, Alaska. Petro is going to be extremely annoying for us, and he's actually on this flank. How do I know he's on this flank? Well, actually, do I? No, it's a sync drop Jedi Div. All right, sorry. I thought the... Actually, no, the Petro is coming this way, as you can see from the minimap, which is going to be quite annoying for us. We don't really want to deal with that. Honestly, I'm thinking of changing flank. And the thing with Kleber is, it's okay to do so. Biggest issue I'm seeing right now is the fact that we're all going A, but this is gonna happen. Like like I said, this is a real game. This is gonna happen where people just decide to uh, switch flank all of a sudden. But the thing is, I don't think I can play this flank because Petro, Petro, Goliath, Incomparable, Shima, Vampire are all coming this way. And I'm pretty sure they're all on comms, on, on like the same comms. So, because they're all in the same clan. So, I think the easiest solution is to, I guess, start farming the Goliath from maximum range. Maybe start distracting them a bit. And that's what I kind of normally do. Just really and truly, just farm damage. Just what I kind of do in Kleber. That's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, nothing too crazy so far. Goliath, the thing is, as long as he doesn't hit you, you're okay. But don't let him hit you. Because when he hits you, he smashes you. Because the AG has high alpha. But he f Goliath should find it relatively hard to actually end up hitting you. Because of the arcs it has. As you can see, it takes him forever for the shells to land towards us. Goliath actually got citadeled. Not sure by what, probably our Pomerner Yamato, because that's where the shells kind of came from. It's okay. What am I trying to do here is set a fire. Why am I not shooting this vampire? Well, I'd have to turn my ship around to actually get turrets on that, because turret traverse is really bad. And he's already behind the rock in the meantime, so probably would have been a waste of time. Eventually, I'm not getting a fire. I should probably load AP on this broadside. I'm gonna try to load some AP. 
Got a fire instantly as we switch ammo type, which is kind of interesting. I don't want to reload booster this because, I mean, he has a super heal anyway. It's kind of a waste here. I'd rather save a reload boost for a destroyer or actually setting a perma fire in the future. Because this Goliath is not at risk of death, sadly. Get some AP damage. There are Torps coming, but I believe we're gonna dodge. These are Shimmas and Vampires. These are the Shimmas ones, I believe, and those are the Vampire ones. I'm gonna dodge like this. I'm getting shot at by, I believe, Petro, maybe. No? Musashi from 18 kilometers is actually shooting us. Okay, interesting. Musashi is actually choosing to run away on the flank. He is winning. Interesting. Gearing is in B. Mm, we could go B. Our issue being if Petro comes back, but I don't think he can come back. Right now I'm kind of alone here because, well, our Shima died and our Minotaur died because they kind of played over aggressive on a flank we definitely were going to lose, right? So they should have probably left or been pointed away way earlier, obviously. I mean, we saw the ships coming, the, the like five man division. Anyway, let's go B. I'm going to ping here for our carrier to actually come and spot B. Let's see how this goes. Nakimov is going to come as well to torture me as well, which is not going to be good times for us. Alaska is at risk of death. Yo, oh, if he spots it, if he spots it. We're going to reload booster this actually right here. The issue is this gearing can definitely go dark as he wishes here, but I set him on fire so he can't actually go dark because his spotting is two kilometers plus whatever his actual spotting is. So we might actually be able to kill him here. Oh yeah, <laughs> Kleber reload booster. We dumpster him with high alpha shells. He dies. Very good. Now B is free for us to take. Our issue being the Nakimov aircraft. Gearing actually torped, but we end up dodging. Musashi is right in front of us. And you're like, why are you still shooting? I can't really go dark here because of the carrier anyway. We do end up taking two bombs. That's really bad. For me. But it's okay. I don't personally think this uh, Musashi will kill us, so I'm gonna turn away. I can't contest this cap, but he cannot take it. The biggest issue right now for me, as you can see from the minimap, is this Petro. The important thing always when playing Kleber and any ship really and truly... Dude, he smashed us with AP. That's okay though. I think we're gonna smash him with Torps. Um, the biggest thing is look at the minimap all the time. Did that Musashi shoot me from 18 kilometers with HE? Wow. Long range capabilities, sir. Alright, we do smash the Musashi a bit with three torpids. Very good, very good. He's actually gonna flood out. No, he DCP in. That's okay, our CV and us can actually end up finishing him off. Again, biggest issue is this Petro right now, who is running at us. Sadly, nothing really here on our team. You have to keep in mind that there's nothing here. I keep dodging into these shells, because they're aiming so poorly. My mistake here. It's not really something you can like easily predict someone's bad aim, I guess. Especially in like a Petro. Wow. Wow. But yeah, Petro's awful to fight against just because of the instant like shell <laughs> like that, that, that hit you like immediately. There's like minimal dodging capabilities. But um, there I just had to literally just not dodge by the way against this person because he aimed basically really badly. So I ended up taking shells for nothing. Um, the Slav is actually pushing up to the corner. Um, they shouldn't chase him, bro. Like like our teammate said. Our Yamato ended up going bow in on a flank he definitely was going to lose. I'm not sure why that actually ended up happening. Um, but it's okay. I'm going to come and help you, Carrier. It's okay. We're going to need B-Cap this game to win. How do we win this game? You always have to ask yourself, how do we win this game? Well, so these destroyers are probably going to come back to beam. These guys are in a division with the with the incomparable, sadly. So it's not going to be too easy, honestly, for us. This is going to be really difficult, fighting against a division like this. Um, we can't play down here because Petro Goliath is unplayable for us. And up here is honestly going to be almost borderline unplayable because of the Condi, Vampire, and Shima. So. But with Nakimo help? I don't know, we'll see. It's pretty much just me and the Nakimov up here. Nothing's, the Palmer is definitely not going to help us. The biggest thing is, don't assume your teammates are always going to help you. But the carrier is definitely helping me up here for sure. Which is really nice of him. 
On the is in gun range. I'm gonna try get a fire on the incomparable. Vampire's back. We could shoot them possibly. Our CV is spotted, I believe, because the incomparable is shooting something. Yeah, I think he's shooting a carrier. He is. I'm actually gonna shoot the incomparable because I think I'd possibly get more damage on him. Actually, the vampire is turning because of the bombs. He's gonna turn back in though. I need to know where the Shima is. I have no idea where the Shima is right now. He could be here. Or here, or he's not with the vampire. I think he's in front of the Condi. I think. I would assume he's in front of the Condi. I believe the Shima's spotting me right now, unless the there the vampire is out of smoke. Honestly, gonna be quite a difficult game, guys. I don't think we should give up yet. We're gonna be fine overall. My biggest issue right now is that Slav is actually pushing back in. I'm gonna try boost this, because he doesn't have smoke right now. And he also has to deal with the carrier. My biggest issue again is the Condi. I wanna always keep an eye on those shells, that's why I zoom out and in a lot. I want to keep an eye on these condies if they, he's actually shooting me. Because I do have IFA, but that's pretty much the vampire, right? Hard to hit the shells at these ranges, but we do actually hit the vampire. And our teammate also smashes him, whoever that was. I believe it's the Pomeran or the Alaska. One of them does end up smashing. Who is he shooting? The Nakimov or me? He's shooting the Nakimov, which is good for me. Because if the condi actually connects shells on me, I pretty much just get smashed here. Um... Let's try to get some damage. He actually knows he's going to be shooting me now. I think our CV went dark. That's basically what happened. Uh, CV's going to be pinned up against the wall. So we're going to have to need to help him here. We basically need to ask our team to focus the Condi. Guaranteed. He's the biggest importance right now. We also don't know where their Shima is, by the way. Uh, what shot me there? Masashi? Probably. I have Aiden proc, right? Or was I blind? I was probably blind. <laughs> We're actually getting B cap with the Kitakazi. Uh, Smolensk kills the Goliath. Conqueror is having a brawl with a Petro, but the Conqueror is broadside at close range, so he might actually just die there. So he needs to be really careful. Condi is killable here because he is kind of suiciding to kill our carrier. Um, these are Shima Torps going towards our carrier. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa shit. The Condi shooting me? He auto loaded? That was an auto load, I believe. That means he won't be able to shoot us for a while. Fire. I don't think that's Permal, but that's okay. So my goal average damage in Kleber, personally, I, I, I currently average like 125,000 and that's what I'm trying to get to here. Anything over his bonus really and truly. Conquer does kill the Petro, which is actually really important for our team. Petro is really awful to fight against and and just it, it's a pain for us as well to contest caps and stuff because of the radar. But yeah, very good that we killed them. Um, Condi here is at the risk of death. He kind of overextended for this for sure. When we do actually end up getting the kill, which is really nice, because that helps us out a bunch. I'm gonna try not to hit this island. We need to get some provide a support here for us, because the planes are coming towards us, it seems. Um, hopefully he goes for the Alaska, because the Alaska is healthier, and he can actually tank it, or go for the Pomeran, maybe. We're gonna try set some fires on this Musashi and try not to die. Our speed boost did run out, so I have to be really careful. This Musashi has shown interest in shooting us the entire game. Remember, he's the one from 18 kilometers. Really and truly, it is scary right now just because I don't have speed boost and I'm only 6k HP left. So we need to try conserve as much HP as possible whilst trying to output as much damage as possible, right? And um, that's really and truly dodging and stuff. Shima is actually going to end up killing our carrier, sadly. I wish I was up there, but again... I didn't want to waste all our time fighting a Shima when we have to kill this Musashi, right? This Musashi is a direct... Uh, of direct importance here because he is able to contest the cap. Sadly, our carrier will die here. I do feel a bit bad. Well, these are Shima Torps coming this way. Oh shit. What? Well, that's scary. That's scary because I have to dodge the carrier strike too, and this is going to be really bad for me because I have to sit broadside to rockets. So if the carrier actually comes for me, I probably die. No, the carrier is actually not coming for me. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna sit using this rock. I'm only gonna use back guns here. We do need to kill this Musashi. Musashi's shooting HE, which is a mistake by the Musashi, because when you're shooting low HP French destroyers, you need to be using AP. Remember, guys? 
because of the French saturation gimmick, you need to be using um, AP to do maximum damage or higher alpha damage uh, when they're lower HP. Sorry if uh, there's construction noise in the background. Do let me know though. Do let me know. Um, let's try. I'm gonna reload booster him with AP here. He's semi broadside. I mean, he's pretty broadside, guys. He's relatively full broadside here. So I'm gonna try to unleash as much damage as possible. Uh, I just realized my AA is off. Never keep your AA off in this building, Kleber, because your AA spotting is actually um, worse than your AA range. So there's no point, really. There's no benefit to keeping your AA on. No benefit. Sorry. Yeah, no. Sorry. No benefit to keeping your AA off, unlike normal when uh, you can possibly go dark. Um, or something. But um, Shema is killable by our Alaska here. I don't think I should be need to help him here, but I'm going to come back up. Does he kill our knock him off? No, wow, our knock him off player did really well here for dodging those storms. Good work to him. Um, we need to kill the Slava now. That's, that's of prime importance. We're going to lose the B cap for now, temporarily. Um, as long as this Kitakaze doesn't run it down into Hydros, because Vampire and Incomparable both have Hydros. So it needs to play really carefully and cautiously, if possible. Um, at least smoke up or something. Uh, Smolensk will end up getting the skill. Unless I, I have something to say about that, obviously. <laughs> I have something to say about that, Mr. Smolens. I'm kind of mean. I shouldn't have done that, but maybe... Look, it's I, I'd rather get the kill there and not risk our Smolens getting shot at out of nowhere and dev struck by accident or something than uh, waiting for the Sava to reload, for example, or heal or anything. Just, just guarantee the kill, guys. Just guarantee the kill, always. Right. Um, anyway. So, we need to try kill the Incomparable here in the beacon. Right? That's pretty much it. We kill the incomparable, we win the game. The vampire can't really hold alone against all of us. We have an Alaska, Smolensk, Kitakazi, Kleber. I'm relatively low indeed, but the Smolensk and Alaska are both almost, not almost full HP, but they're half HP, so they're chilling. I'm actually gonna use this rock and sit behind it, so I don't... Oh, there's a vampire? He's really low, actually. He's really low. So as long as we kill this incomparable, we win the game, right? Uh, vampire really can't contest alone unless he gets the carrier spotting necessary, well... It's whilst we're actually going for him. Um, I'm actually... Kita's actually gonna kill him. Nice work, Kita. Good work, buddy. Um, very good team. Really and truly very good team. Even though it started off a bit rough, where uh, half our team basically uh, um, died, like three of the ships went into a flank where we are auto-losing and kind of died. Um, honestly, the rest of the team played really well. I have to be honest. They played really well. Um, we'll give out compliments after this game is done. This was a 16 minute game. Um, pretty decent. Actually, it's probably going to be a bit longer. Okay. 200k, not bad. Four kills so far. Oh, hello, Mr. Carrier Man. Hello, hello. We're actually going to save Reload Booster here. Not well. <laughs> we have to because they've got that. that, that. Incomparable died. But, um, yeah, let's move over to this unlucky move and try kill him, I guess. Um, he's gonna try bomb us here. Obviously, he's gonna be capable of doing that. He's a unlucky move. Um, my issue here is I'm at risk of death. I'm gonna probably die. He actually misses the strike. Nice thing about Nakimov, he can't restrike for a bit. But the sad part is his hull is right here, so he's able to restrike at pretty quick speeds. I'm gonna try angle like this. It's rockets, so... You have to always turn into rockets and turn into skip bombs and then into torps and stuff. It's, I mean, pretty much Nakimov, you turn into it. That's kind of what you have to do, always. I'm gonna try launch as many torps before I die here. I could possibly die. If he sets a fire, I die instantly. Yep. I do die. It's okay, though. I'm gonna launch as many torps as I can. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna park like this, and I'm gonna try unleash some AP, see if I can actually pen. If I can't, we'll switch to HE. I'm actually gonna switch to HE here, because I'm doing zero damage with AP. Um, I do end up dying, that's okay. As you look at the damage with the HE. Um, do I actually get a torpid, get my Kraken? I do!
Very interesting first game. Let's look at the scoreboard really quickly. Well, when the game decides to load it for us. Uh, let's go back to port and load it really quickly so we see the nice background in the background, the map map picture basically. I like I always like looking at the map picture like that. Like this. So let's let's do a quick review of the match here. 229,000 damage, 5 kills. Four torpids, 508 shell hits. Um, got 2.7k base XP. I will have to compliment my carrier at the Alaska, the Kitakazi, and the Smolens. They all played really well, I have to be honest. Um, we, we won because of our team here, for sure. Um, definitely our team had a lot to do with it. Um, we basically stole a kill of our Smolens, so I feel a bit bad. But um, definitely a good game, for sure. Um, here you go. Uh, 229,000 damage, 1.9 million potential damage, you know, um, most of the damage is from HE, as you can see, 106k from HE shells, 52k from fires, and then we have 34k from AP and 36k from torps. Uh, we only shot down one plane because I had my AF the entire game, which was also a mistake. Um, 600,000 credits, you know, the standard, you know, the standard, the standard. It's not really a standard game, but this was actually a really good game to showcase. I'm going to also play another game here for you guys. So we just average it out and see how we can do it this morning. So we'll queue up again. But yeah, um, this is a, a definitely a different type of video for sure. Um, let's see what you guys think about this video, the style at least, you know. If we do get a match. Do we get a match, Wargaming? Do we get a match? Anytime soon, buddy. Anytime soon. There's a lot of ships in queue. It should probably put us in a game, right? <laughs> I would expect them, like, throw us into a game, right? Maybe? Possibly? Who knows? We'll find out very soon. Maybe? Wargaming. What are... Wargaming. Yes, all right. Thank you, Wargaming. Thank you so much. All you have to do, if the queue time feels a bit long, guys, is start yelling Wargaming. And uh, Wargaming will do the rest and pop you in a game really quickly, as you can see. Happens every time in clan battles, it'll work in randoms too. But, uh, second game here in Kleber. I'm only gonna play two games, I think, because then we have like a 60-hour video, so... <laughs> Oh, horrible matchmaking for us, as you can see. Um, really and truly, the tiers are, aren't actually horrible for us, but the amount we can farm is really horrible for us. And Druid is horrible to fight against. Harugumu is really horrible to fight against. Um, Alaska, I mean, it's okay. Smolensk is horrible to fight against, unless you find us broadside. But anyway, we're in a game here. Um, carriers are Shokaku and Shkalov. Nothing too crazy. I mean, last game we fought an Akimov, so fighting a Shokaku shouldn't be as hard. Because the thing with Shokaku is it has AP dive bombers, so it, uh, it removes all the skip bomber threat that we had last game. And the rockets, I mean, they're tier 8 rockets, so I assume they're not going to be as good as Nakimov rockets, right? Um, important thing is to try to not eat those torps from the uh, CV here. A horrible spawn for me. Kleber does not like this side of the map. Kleber likes open water. Um, Kleber likes running around open water. This is horrible. You can't even spot and do things and run around because, as you can see, the space you have up here is really bad. And I mean, I'm gonna just come up here anyway, try to help our Shima. And in the meantime, our CV is gonna spot around and see where the enemy battleships are and we see where we have to do things because we're trying to fight battleships remember guys biggest thing you have to do in these destroyers is fight heavy cruisers and battleships and destroyers obviously obviously everything but but the thing the thing is if you want to average high numbers guys you have to be farming those battleships i mean that's pretty much it right um you're not gonna get high damage numbers from farming destroyers that's just not gonna happen right i mean when you see a destroyer you obviously shoot it like we did last game where we shot the gearing and whatever 
but you're not trying to kill yourself in Kleber to try to get destroyer damage. That's not how you're meant to be playing it, guys. So don't 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 just think that you have to be suiciding to kill destroyers. That's not how you play this ship. Okay. Um, pre pretty much the game tells you that with its detection. If if it had six kilometer detection, go ahead and have your fun. But this has like eight seven point eight kilometer detection with full concealment build. Mine's eight point six. Eight point six really doesn't matter, guys, compared to seven point eight. That's why I don't take concealment and randoms. Because it really doesn't make a difference. But we'll see if this game it makes a difference because as you can see the size of this 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 side is horrendous. I hate this side of the map. Hate it. It's awful. So there's something in C cap. I'm gonna try ping, maybe our carrier could spot it, but remember, it's just, if he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, so it's okay. Our Des Moines does radar, but he is a bit far away, so I don't think he should have propped radar. Yep, I, we, well, we know he's there, but we are spotted, so he's actually playing really aggressively. I'm gonna actually speed boost here, so I don't get one shot by the good and Lou. <laughs> one shot, by the way. I'm not gonna get one shot, but you know what I mean. Druid, it's a Druid, that's really bad for us, so I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna take quite a lot of damage here, sadly, at the start, but it's okay. Druid played really aggressively. Didn't really expect it, we do have a Des Moines up here. But it's okay. I'm gonna come up here. I don't really like this side of the map, as I said. It's just too close quarters for Kleber. It, it, it really ruins your dodging ability. Because you're fighting so close, right? You're fighting at 10 kilometers, 9 kilometers, 12 kilometers. I mean, 12 kilometers is definitely enough, but... 9, 8, 7 kilometers? No way, that's definitely not enough, especially against other destroyers, right? So, you have to play really carefully. I'll try to get a fire on a Gudun. Remember, fires on Gudun last 60 seconds, so it's basically like getting a battleship fire, except Gudun can't have fire prevention, so... You can possibly get 4 fires on the thing. I'm gonna try to do some damage to this Kev. I might just reload booster him, see what, what we can do. I zoom in and out a lot, you may notice I've gotten complaints about this, but I like doing it because it helps me dodge and shit. Shit, the good ones do dropping us with double bombers? That's a bit weird. Let's see how much damage he does, I guess. Mr. Gooden. Hopefully if our Shima opens up on this uh, Kev, we can actually kill him, but our Shima has to open up. He's opening up, that's perfect. Gooden actually did zero damage with bombs. Pretty pretty standard. We do get the Kiev kill, we get first blood. I'm gonna try to get a fire on this uh, Gooden here. Druid is back into the cap. We're gonna ping, so to let our CV know. He's going to that direction, but just make sure, you know. Smolensk is coming up here, which is gonna be really bad for us, actually. Especially in these close quarter situations. We do get hit by the Gooden. Remember, Gooden shells aren't that slow. So you have to be really careful about them. The small Smolensk is so annoying. Double fire, he's gonna DCP that probably. Don't expect them to let it burn, because they're 60 second fires. He does end up DCPing, that's okay. I'm gonna use the border here. I mean, people can say uh, border humper all, all they want, but the fact is, I mean, sometimes you have to use it. If you, I mean, the, the map is so limiting up here, you just have to use the border. Because the, the space you have is impossible to use. I mean... And he's using the border too, so there's nothing wrong in using the border when you have to, guys. You have to, you have to. Heard people say they'd rather die instantly than uh, use the border, but I mean, that's I mean that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No way am I doing that. Obviously, if the map is designed in a way where you... You literally... It's designed to use the border, by the way. You have to use the border. Um, fire on the FDG here. He's gonna probably insta DCP. You know them types. Here we are. Is he DCPing? Let's see. What's your number tick? He DCP'd instantly. We're gonna actually reload booster him here to try set a perma fire. That's what you want to be trying to use reload boosters on. Farming the stores, farming broadsides with AP, or setting perma fires. And I actually get... I need to start hitting things. That's, I mean, to get fires, you need to hit things, Molta, right? Obviously. So, we hit them a bit there. But we kind of messed up our reload booster a bit, sadly. I'm sorry, I apologize. We got the fire anyway, though. We got the fire anyway. We got the front superstructure fire. He does not have fire prevention. So, we could possibly get a second fire here if we keep shooting him. 
I also want to rotate and get off this flank, by the way. I don't want to stay here because really and truly fighting the small ends is impossible for me. Shimon's getting C. We don't really have to stay here anymore. And we have the speed to rotate around and get away from here. So I'm going to do that and go B or, or somewhere there anyway to help our Yoshino. He's kind of alone against the gearing. I don't like that. I would like to help him a bit. I don't know if I'm going to get there in time, obviously, because he's a bit far away from me. Double perma on the FDG. That's what we wanted. That's what we were hoping for. Coping for. <laughs> but uh, we got it. So I'm going to start moving towards B now, guys. Um, that's the biggest thing with Kleber. You have to rotate. Rotate, 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 rotate. Big, really big importance, guys, the rotations. If you want big damage numbers, you have to rotate. Unless people are literally just walking into you and giving you free damage, right? So just rotate. Look at last game, for example. We rotated as well. Anyway. The fire actually ran out. It didn't really do much damage to the FDG. We're only on 60k damage, which is really bad damage, to be honest. We're not expecting high damage this game, and um, obviously, because it's only a two battleship game. But um, I'm trying to hope for around 100, 120k in a game like this. I mean, it's two battleships. So I don't think we're actually going to get to uh, 120k. Um... Seems to just be an auto win, I think. Look, I'll take, in this game, a horrible match like this. Probably 80,000 plus, sadly. It's sad, but, I mean, that's what we'll take, I guess. So, what am I gonna try to do here? I'm gonna try intercept these guys coming down by going this way next to where Shima currently is. And why am I going here? Well, because then I'd be able to shoot them from here. We can get some damage. Now I'm plane spotted because my plane spotting is incredibly bad. Thunder does go down sadly. This game is definitely not over, guys. It's not over till it's over. One of the things I do say on stream sometimes, especially when we're losing matches. It's not over till it's over, guys. <laughs> but Iron FDG is probably gonna insta DCP as usual. And we have to just expect that. Actually, he hasn't actually insta dcp which is very nice and very interesting for us. Maybe he's uh he's mad that we actually said double fire before, so he knows that to not do that, obviously. Um he can DCP now since he went dark. But uh, if he gets spotted again, I'm just gonna reload booster him if he does DCP, so. He still hasn't DCP'd, which is smart. He's playing it smart. He's actually playing it smart, so good on him. This time he is actually playing it smart. Gearing is pushing in, but I believe our teammates are gonna 2v1 him, right? So I don't really have to shoot the destroyer 12, 12, 13 kilometers, maybe? Or do I have to? Let's see. We'll figure it out. GK is actually pushing back in. They actually lost south. That's a bit worrying for our team right now. I might just go into B here and just help them. Because we're, we're still not winning this game. This game is definitely not over, guys. So we need to try apply pressure somewhere and take this B cap or something. I'm gonna go and rush the gearing and B. I'm gonna go rush the gearing and B. Might be a dumb idea, but with reload booster, I feel like we can kill him almost borderline immediately unless his team really helps him. Uh, but his team are so far away that we should be okay. I'm gonna request support from the Shima. This is gonna be an issue, the plane spotting. But I think the planes are dealing with Nord, so... So hopefully he doesn't come this way. He is coming this way. I don't know where he's going. I'm spotted by gearing and smoke. Well, out of smoke. He left his smoke, obviously. Right? Spotted. There he is. This is a kill for us. Guaranteed, I can assure you. Oh, no, there's two of them. I'm gonna actually kill the Shema here. Oh shit, the gearing's moving forward. My mistake. We should have killed the Shema there, we could have gotten an extra kill. Now we need help from our Shema to get this gearing, guaranteed, or else I die. I think our Shema's gonna help us. Benson should also probably just choose to help us here. I'm sorry I'm ramming you, Shema, but I have to. Because I'm really low HP. We both end up dodging Torps here, that's really good. Alright, perfect Shema, good work. I know he got both kills, but we're okay with that, because we do get both Destroyers, and we're actually gonna get the B cap. Now... After we're done here, we have two options. Go farm the GK on A or help on, on C. But I'm actually going to choose to farm the GK on A because he's an isolated target. And if we go farm these guys up here, they're going to just all shoot us. So 
We're just gonna go farm the GK because he's an isolated target. Or is there Shima gonna dumpster him with Torps here? No. Alright, so we're gonna get B. I'm gonna start moving south. I'm gonna try get resets on this GK. I don't know if I can actually do it in time because I'm a bit far away. But remember, we spec into AFT so we get some gun range extra, of course. And for these types of situations as well. Come on, come on. Can we reset A so we don't lose it? Because it would be really bad if we lose it right now. He's actually gonna step out of it, I think. We do reset him anyway, it doesn't matter. He also stepped out of it, so I'm just gonna farm him now. Um, just get some fires, guys. Important thing, fire damage. Very important, try to get some superstructure damage too. Really and truly, just stack your fires, stack your damage. Get as much damage as possible. Sadly, we're not getting fires, but I'm sure at some point the, the, the fires are going to hit and we're going to start setting some on this GK straight away. Uh, Shima's actually torping him, so hopefully he dies so we can actually deal with Nort. Because this game is, like I said a hundred times already, this game is not over. You know, Archkalov is kind of suiciding into the Druid. Not sure why. Um, he could have sat behind the rock up north if he chose to, but he chose not to, I guess. That's okay. I mean, it is what it is. That means our Des Moines is going to die, which means we lose the C cap. And therefore, a uh, big, big, big risk for our game being lost here. G oh, Shema does end up smashing the GK. Good job to him. 1k HP Shema. Now we're going to turn north. Yo, the Moin kills the Druid. Good job. Actually, I think we're fine. Somehow, Archkalov is winning. And we're fine. Obviously, it would have been safer to be less aggressive in the Archkalov. But maybe he's distracting him so our Des Moines gets to live longer. Who knows? Who knows, really? Who knows? I'm gonna turn north like this. And rotate back. I don't know if this um, this type of video is gonna help you guys or anything, but... I'm trying to just talk about what I'm doing in randoms here. Um, just doing, you know. I'm actually not gonna go to the sea cap. I'm gonna go here where Shim is. Maybe not, actually. I don't want to actually face the Gudin because his concealment is really good. So when I actually open up to fight him, I'm going to be really close to him and he can actually hit me and smash me every time. So Maybe not smash me, but he can definitely hit me every time. And I'm 6k HP, so I'm obviously at risk of death. These, these rockets, I'm not liking their position. They're coming straight for me, it seems. Maybe go towards the Shima who's actually spotting you. Aim. Or no. Where are you going? Sir? No way. This guy has like... This guy has like seven cents, bro. Holy shit. <laughs> bro, like what the fuck? Dude, this is an RPF carrier, bro. That only points towards my clever. Hello? <laughs> it's okay. He missed the strike anyway. I don't know where he chose to drop there. <laughs> kind of weird uh, drop thing position. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But okay, we're gonna shoot down some planes here because of the fighter. He's flying over us, not sure why. He's just losing his aircraft. Quite interesting um, playstyle for sure. FDG does take a torp up there from our Shimmel. Do I get to shoot down this last plane? Yes, I do. Like I said, biggest issue for us right now is this Gooden. He's the one that's gonna be doing damage to us. Um, my goal, like I said, is 120k average in my Kleber. I'm gonna turn away like this, I don't want this, uh... Is, is the Shokaku gonna come towards me? Or is he gonna fight the destroyers over there? Benson's really low HP, he could probably strike him, but I think he's gonna try spot me for the Gooden, which is actually a good play. To be fair, spotting me for the Gooden is actually really important right now, so... I mean, he's doing the right thing, definitely. I assume the Gooden's probably pinging him to uh, spot me here. If I were to guess. I'm gonna torp like that and one like that. I don't think they're gonna hit, but I mean, you launch them anyway. He's coming towards me. I'm just gonna gain as much distance as physically possible. I'm actually gonna start shooting right now. Let's see if the Gooden shoots me. He does. He didn't actually end up going for the cap, which is really bad for him. So I think we're gonna be fine. The issue are, is gonna be these airstrikes. Are they gonna hit me? Are they gonna hit me? I'm gonna reload booster this, multi-Y, well, the game's over anyway, 
And I'm also almost at risk of death because of all these airstrikes and aircraft, so... And, and shells and stuff, so I'm just gonna do this. Get as much damage as I can before the game ends or before I die. Double fire. He's not DCPing, but he has it available. He guaranteed has it available. He just DCP'd, that's good. Sadly, we won't be able to set the perma fire because the island's a bit too high for Kleber shells. Uh, Shokaku does seem to be trying to AP bomb us. Really doesn't matter, honestly, at this point in the game. He should probably go try AP bomb the Shima, who's on 3k HP. Our destroyers are actually gonna kill the good and Lou, and the game's gonna be over. Another 20 minute game, sadly. Not crazy damage this game, guys, but um, decent game nonetheless. Good and uh, FDG does kill our Benson. They could also kill our Shema. There's all, always possibilities, but they're definitely not winning this game, I can assure you. Because even if they kill both our destroyers, I just run off the screen and we win anyway. No problem, guys. We we can win on one cap. We can win on one cap. This is no problem at all. Wouldn't lose actually burning. Um, there's no point for me to shoot him. Someone else is burning him. Probably a destroyer. Oh, he's actually DCP'd again. He's actually gonna take a orb? No, he's not. He's doing pretty well to live and survive. The Gooden's playing pretty well. Good job to our Shima. He's on four kills, man. Our Shima's on four kills. I mean, we could have probably killed the Shima and the Gearing in B cam, but we kind of chose not to almost. Um, pretty long games, honestly. Not normal. At least for my my, my Torpo games, but... In Kleber, we do get semi-long games, I guess. But we did win both, which is really nice for us, obviously. Nice to showcase two wins and how we played for the win both games in a row. Um, we'll look at the scoreboard and I'll talk about the Kleber a bit before we end. And then, I guess we'll see you in the next one, right? <laughs> but yeah, let's let's talk about the scores. A personal score. Let's uh, actually go back to port and get this out. Out of the way. I'm also going to check my average and stat and read it out to you for these two games. I'm only playing two games, obviously, because uh, it would take really long if I were to showcase three games. <laughs> so we'll showcase two games and make a 45-minute video. Um, so this is Kleber, 129k damage, 330 shell hits, 30 plane kills, 1 kill, 10 fires, you know, standard uh, fire, first blood. Uh, our Des Moines actually got top, we're gonna compliment him. We're also gonna compliment our Shema. There you go. Um, uh, 2.3k basics, we're not really that good, honestly. But uh, it's okay. It's okay, you can't get 200k every game. 129k damage, again, mostly from HE shells. All of it from HE shells, because fires and HE shells. No torps this game. Um, Kev, we did 18k to at the start, which was crazy. FDG 54k, but there you go. This is the damage distribution, we had 2 million potential. Credits and XP, we had um, 400,000 credits, and here you go. This is with perma camo. But yeah, that's pretty much the Kleber. So for average today, in these two games, we had 179,000. It's only two games, obviously. Average kills, three kills, uh, both were wins, both were wins of games. Um, average playing kills, 15, because of that second game, and PR, 5,300. There you go, there's the Kleber. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys want the link to the build, if you guys want to uh, have the link to the build without having to open the video every time, guys, there's going to be a link in the description to my Discord. I will show the build one final time here on screen. But there's a link to my Discord in the description, guys. That's where you can find my build for the Kleber and every other tier 8 to tier 10 ship in the game. Um, so from tier 8, premium stack trees everything except for carriers sadly i don't build those but i have battleships cruisers and destroyers i have them all built except for tier 8 battleships but i'll finish building those um, soon um but here's the kleber build guys again preventative maintenance incoming fire alert last stand i'm running se ar i'm running uh main battery a specialist uh, main battery a expert and then fearless brawler all those um equipment i'm running reload mod concealment prop mod um Tire Traverse, Engine Boost Mod 1, and then Main Armaments Mod 1. And here you go, this is the, what the Kleber actually looks like. This is the hull. Here you go, very lovely looking ship. Very nice. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video of Kleber. If you did, 
And if you like this format, let me know. I will try my best to make this format in the future where I play two games, showcase the ship, and just like live commentary what just happened. As I said, this is not a pre-recorded video. Um, it's literally me logging in. Hey, guys, I want to play two games for you guys. Here we are. Okay. So, again, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Um, tell me if you actually enjoyed in the comments if possible. Um, if you didn't, if you did, I don't know, just tell me. But anyway, big fan, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Big fan.